Hi, I'm Cynthia Cloutier, and I am showcasing this quilt that my quilt guild made, a group of us. I didn't make it all myself, I helped out. It is a, a commemorative quilt, remembrance of the 19th Amendment to celebrate its 100th anniversary in, 19, in 2020. Unfortunately, when we got the quilt done, it was the pandemic time and we're now just able to show the quilt at various locations. Uh, you can see on the top here, votes for women, and around the quilt we have uh, several quotes from a lot of the suffragettes. The colors of the quilt, the purple, the white, and the gold, are symbolic. The purple stands for justice, the white is for purity of purpose, and the gold is for courage. In the center, we have a couple of sunflowers. These are to uh, memorialize Elizabeth Cady Stanton, one of the leader suffragists. She would write articles uh, for the suffragette newsletter. She always signed them, your sunflower. So those commemorate her. The bluebird in the center here is for um, Susan B. Anthony, and she had given out 10 bluebirds in several of the conventions. And so that memorializes um, Susan Anthony. Uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, she was an author and lecturer of women's rights and the suffrage movement. She was instrumental to hold the first women's rights convention in Seneca Falls, New York with Lucretia Mott. She also founded the National Women's Suffrage Association in 1869 with Susan B. Anthony. Now Lucretia Mott, she was excluded from the World Anti-Slavery Convention in London. Only men were allowed and that raised her ire. So she was invited to the first public gathering about the women's rights in Seneca Falls, where she co-wrote the Declaration of Sentiments. Susan B. Anthony was involved in social reform, women's rights, and women's suffrage since she was only 17 years old. She became the New York State agent for the American Anti-Slavery Society, and in 1863 with Elizabeth Cady Stanton, she helped found the Women's Loyal National League. And only three years later, they initiated the American Equal Rights Association and began publishing the National Women's Suffrage Association newsletter. And this later, merged with the American Women's Suffrage Association to become the National American Women's Suffrage Association. In 1872, Susan B. Anthony was arrested for voting in Rochester, New York, and she violated the men's only law and was fined. Um, she never paid the fine, and the authorities never pursued her. In 1878, Anthony and Stanton presented to Congress an amendment requesting giving women the right to vote. This amendment was introduced by Senator Aaron Sargent from California and was eventually ratified as the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in 1920. Another of the suffragettes was Elizabeth Arden whom we, women anyway, known for her cosmetics. Uh, her mantra was, I don't sell cosmetics, I sell hope. And as a dedicated suffragist, she supplied red lipstick to the 15,000 women marching in 1912 to wear as a sign of solidarity. Uh, to create this wonderful quilt, there was a group of about seven or eight of us, and uh, each of us made one of these blocks 
and then several members of our quilt guild made these borders here that you see made out of all the gold and then the cornerstones here and here and uh, we got together about once every two weeks to lay the quilt out we started by discussing what we wanted to do with the colors uh, one person Bonnie Broder who at the time was our guild president she came up with this star design for the quilt. Another person did the applique of this vine with the sunflowers. Another person did the embroidery here, which says 19th Amendment Centennial, 1920 to 2020. And then another person did the printing of some of these quotes and um, we all got together, we put the quilt pieces together, and uh, a woman from the Guild, Jody Koch, she did the quilting. Um, something you would be able to see close up in person is the back of the quilt, and what we have are several quotes from a lot of the suffragettes, along with another bluebird, and further up there's a sunflower, and down the bottom here is our guild symbol, I guess you could say. And again, it's the Mother Town Quilters in Lancaster who created this quilt. It was also accepted into the Lowell Quilt Museum's uh, competition, I guess you could say. And uh, it was one of the guild members' quilts from the New England area that was accepted and was put on display for about a month. Mother Town Quilters has been around for more than a decade. We meet every Tuesday at 6 o'clock at the Village Church in Lancaster. And um, we meet the second Tuesday of every month. If anybody is interested in coming to one of our meetings, just stop by. Don't need to call or make a reservation or anything. Again, it's 6 o'clock, second Tuesday every month at the Village Church in Lancaster. And uh, we hold a speakers part of the meeting. We have guest speakers coming in either via Zoom or in person. And some of them are extremely entertaining. And then we have the business portion. And then we have a social hour from 6 to 7 p.m. So you can stop in anytime between 6 and 7 and join us for the social hour and then for the actual quilt meeting itself. And we do have workshops about every month on various subjects about quilting. I myself, I've been quilting for about 30 years and I find that I learn something every single meeting, every single workshop and it's very, very interesting. If you're interested, you can uh, get onto our website, mothertownquilters.com, and see what's uh, coming up for the next couple of meetings. And uh, currently we have 55 members, so uh, we're growing again. Since the pandemic, we were meeting uh, via Zoom, and. At first it was a little uh, little difficult, but then we got it under our belt and everything went fine. And so now we are meeting in person again and having our workshops and lectures in person. So go to mothertownquilters.com and check us out. Thank you.